Hi, I'm here today with Amy Peterson from our Product and Materials Testing Division here at DDL. Amy and I will discuss ASTM standard D3332, which is the standard test method for mechanical shock fragility of products. Amy, welcome. Thanks. To start off, can you please give me a brief background about DDL's Product and Materials Testing Division, as well as the type of testing services that your division has the capability to perform? Sure. Like our counterparts over in packaging, um, here at the Product and Materials Division, we focus more on med device and med device packaging. So what we do is we test the material that the package is made out of to ASTM standards mostly, and we also test the product that's inside the package. So if it's a catheter roller, we're testing to an ISO 594 and tests such as that. And we also do electrosurgical testing and um, shock fragility testing. Wonderful. We're here today to talk specifically in regards to the ASTM standard D3332. Can you give us an overview of this standard, Amy, and what it is primarily used for? Sure. This standard helps determine the shock fragility of products, and it may also be used in determining um, whether or not your packaging is sufficient enough to protect your product during shipment. Um, so what we do is there's two test methods within this test standard. Um, test method A is used first, and then that helps determine the product's critical velocity change. And then from that data, you move on to test method B, and you determine the maximum critical acceleration that the product can see before damage. And from these two tests, you'll get, um, you can get data that will help you choose the optimum cushion, cushioning materials. What type of equipment is needed to perform shock fragility testing? Sure. First of all, you need a shock machine. You also need a signal conditioner and accelerometer. Uh, with the accelerometer, you attach it rigidly to the base of your product or somewhere within your shipping container, uh, which somewhere probably near the center. And then from that, you attach your package rigidly to the shock machine. You mentioned that there are two test methods that are commonly used for shock tests. Test method A and test method B. Can you define each of those individually for us? Sure. Uh, with test method A, you're determining the critical velocity change to your product. So in this portion of the test, um, what we use is a half stein shock wave. And we, what we do is we set the shock machine to produce a pulse below what we would expect to be the critical velocity change for your product. And then what we do is we'll drop the machine once, and then there'll be an inspection to your product, or a functional check, depending on what we're testing. And then once it's examined and there's no damage, then we'll continue this process, increasing the velocity change until failure occurs. And with that, we'll get this graph that we'll show you. So these are your each test. This is your first test, and then you will increase your velocity up until the point where failure occurs. And then you'll get this critical velocity change line. And test method B? Okay, in this portion of it, um, you have to just test method A first, and then we're determining the critical acceleration change for the damage boundary curve. So in this portion, we use a trapezoidal shock pulse, and then we take the information from the first test and we multiply your velocity change by at least 1.57. Two is typically used in industry. And then we uh, apply the shock pulse to the product and then determine the maximum fared acceleration and the velocity. To make, you have to make sure that those you've achieved your velocity level. And then after the first drop, we do an inspection to the product and make sure no damage has occurred. And if no damage has occurred, then we increase the acceleration until failure occurs. And then once we get all those data points, we graph it here. So in here, your velocity change is not changing, but we're increasing the maximum fair acceleration for each drop until failure occurs. And then you get this critical acceleration line. What type of data is collected for this test, and what will the results of this test help determine for the customer? All right, from this test, you'll get a damage boundary curve. Um, it takes the data from test method A, the velocity change, to critical velocity, 
And you'll also get the maximum accel fair acceleration change from test method B. And then what happens is these two lines get plotted, and then what you'll get is a damage region on if your product sees an acceleration and velocity combination in this region, there's likely that your product will have failure. If it's in this unshaded region, no damage is likely to occur if your product sees a combination of acceleration and velocity change in this region. And the parameters that this is dependent on is the shock pulse shape, the acceleration, and the velocity changes. What kinds of products are commonly tested at DDL to the standard ASTM D3332? This one is so broad. You can test any product that goes into packaging. This really helps design the optimal packaging to protect your product. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Amy, for your insight today on standard ASTM D3332 and shock fragility testing. Thanks for having me.